Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Photoshop CC tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate the album artwork for J. Cole's newly released For Your Eyes Only. So this is the original artwork with photography by Anthony Supreme and direction by Scott Laser. I'm not sure who else worked on it, but credit to them. I always like to mention that the original idea and creation is definitely the harder part. It's where the credit should go. It's much easier to recreate things in Photoshop after you already see them. But I do these videos as a way for you guys to maybe have some fun and pay homage to the original music if you liked it and learn maybe a couple techniques along the way of trying to recreate things. So this is the recreation that I came up with pretty quickly and I'm going to start from scratch and redo it and show you guys the steps. So to begin, I have two things open in Photoshop. I have a picture that I want to use and then I also have this picture of this torn paper. This is a free stock image that I found on the, on the internet. I'll link it below. If you guys want to get crafty, you know, go for it. Scan pieces of paper, paint on things, and scan them to your computer, take pictures of them. That's more likely how the original was done. You can tell this is like some watercolor type of torn paper. But in this case, let's go digital. So I'm going to go File, New, and let's open up a new hypothetical CD square canvas. So that'll be 4.75 inches square, or in pixels that's 1425 pixels we're not really going to print this so I'm not too worried about the bleed and the edges and the red green blue and CMYK and all that but this is what our blank square document looks like at that size so at this point I'm going to drag my photo that I was going to use in this document and then I'm going to drag that torn paper in this document as well so I can have them ready to use next I'm going to take this background layer and I'll invert it to be black I'm just using the shortcut command I you could also go to layer new fill layer solid color and choose a black solid color either way to begin let's position our photo and give it that torn edge look so I'm gonna press command T to scale things down a bit and then to get rid of these edges I'm gonna to go to layer layer mask reveal all and that's going to create a layer mask for us to paint on and erase stuff away. So I'll grab my paintbrush now and using Photoshop's default kind of rough spongy brushes at the end here, I'll make sure I'm working with black as my foreground color. I'll lift my brush size up a lot. I'm just using the right and left bracket keys to quickly increase and decrease the brush size. And then I'll paint away these edges. Now I'm painting in black on the layer mask, not on the actual layer. So that's kind of hiding this part of the layer. I'm just going to slightly dip into the top here just so it has that off kilter torn paper feel. If I go too far, I'll undo. And if you actually hold shift and click, you can paint in a direct straight up and down line. That way you can get the edges a little bit too. So now we've got a bit more hand placed and torn looking photo effect. And in order to make this black and white, Let's go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Black and White. Now in this menu, you can adjust each of the separate color tones and channels to get an exact black and white effect that you desire. But I'm just going to leave it at the basic look because we're going to apply some more effects on later on. So now let's get to adding all of these little torn edges and pieces. So I have that torn edge layer that I dragged into the canvas from earlier and I'm going to right click on this and convert it to a smart object so we can work on it. Now I'm, I'm going to double click on that smart object layer. It's going to open up that object in its own little section so we can cut it out essentially. So depending on the torn stock that you have, it's going to be different on what's the easiest way to cut it out. In my case, I'm going to go a little bit unorthodox and grab the magnetic lasso tool and then kind of follow and trace this white edge. Now remember, you want that white edge too. That's, that's what's going to give you that torn photo look. But I don't want all that brown paper. So this is just one way to do it. There's others, but once I have it done, I'm going to click. That's the one thing about the magnetic lasso tool. Sometimes it doesn't trace the corners well. But that's why you go back in with your polygonal lasso tool Make sure you're working on Add to Selection, and then clean up those edges that you weren't able to catch. I'm going to zoom in a bit and take care of a few of these dips that are unnecessary. I'm not taking my time as much as I should. You guys should take your time more to get a cleaner effect. And of course, you can use lots of other selection tools like Refine Edge and Quick Selection. But in this case, 
rougher is fine. So I have this portion selected. And what I'm going to do is go to layer, layer mask, hide selection. Now we just have our simple black and white. And one more step I'm going to take just to avoid any more color fringe is I'll go to layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation, and then turn the saturation all the way down. That's going to make sure everything is black and white. So I can press X on this now and press save, and that's going to save your smart object. And now you can see it's ready for us to work with. So I'm going to duplicate it one time, hide that original so we can go back to it, and then press command T and then hold shift and begin placing these different ones. So first let's create that one on top. So let's create that torn edge on top. Now I normally wouldn't recommend ever stretching anything non-proportionally, but in this case the torn edge doesn't really have anything that needs to be maintained in proportion too much. So I am gonna stretch things a bit. So that looks about right. Now I'm just gonna do the same thing for the corners. I'll take my original one, I'll duplicate it, and then I'll press Command T and I'll drag it down and get that left corner going. And then I'll duplicate that. I'll go to Edit Transform, Flip Horizontal, and I'll get that right corner going. And then I'll make one last duplication and place this one on the top right edge. And for this one, I'm going to actually place it above everything so that it overlaps that top one. So now that I've got my pieces placed, let's create those little colorful accents. So I know this is on top and I'm going to create a new layer right underneath that one. And I'll take a color just like in the original, I'll take a, a bright green color and I'll use my same spongy rough brush and I'll increase the brush size so it fills in this edge. And I'm actually going to make quick strokes here and if I want I can even hold shift to create perfectly up and down strokes. Now from here, I'm actually going to turn the opacity of this down a bit, and then I'll actually go back to my original photo layer. I'll grab my brush tool, and I'll reveal a little bit more of the photo in that edge, make it look like it's some worn away tape or something. So I'll brush white on my layer to bring back some of the photo, and then I think I'm going to set the blending mode of that green color to multiply, and maybe keep the opacity around 60. So that creates that little colorful splash. And then I'm going to do something slightly different to get that blue color in the corner. I'm going to take my corner torn paper layer, press Command J. All right, so now we have one on top. And then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to transform it. So this is the one that's underneath. I'm going to transform a piece of it so that it's sticking out. Then I'm going to go to Image Adjustments, Hue Saturation. I'll press Colorize and turn up the lightness and then adjust the color to be blue. Now in order to get some of that texture out of it, I'm gonna to go to layer, layer mask, go to reveal all, and then use that same brush that we've been using, except this time turn the opacity down to about 20%, turn the flow down a bit, and then just lightly brush into that layer mask with black and use a couple different strokes. So this is just the, the first workflow that came to mind for me. If you feel like there's a better way, go for it, try it out, experiment. There's no wrong way. We're just kind of having some fun and practicing some techniques. So now we've got the two, two little color accents, but now to bring everything together, you can see in the original, it's a lot more washed out, a lot more chalky feeling and color. So in order to replicate this, I'm gonna go back to my original layer and first thing, you see that kind of blurry haze around the original photo? I'm going to duplicate my photo layer, and then I'll go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I'll add about 20 or 30 pixels of blur. Then I'm going to set this layer to screen, and then lower the opacity to about 50 or 60%. And you can see that automatically gives us that foggier, blurrier look, and it'll still all be black and white because it's under that black and white adjustment layer. And then to create a more washed out look overall, I'm going to create two different levels layer just to create some variance. So first, right on top of our black and white layer, I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, levels, and then I'm just going to take the output levels and bring the black slider up a bit. And that's going to make all the blacks much more gray. 
I don't want to go too overboard because I'm going to do this again. Actually, I'll just right click on the same layer and duplicate it and then drag this new one above everything. So what that does is it creates twice the washing out on some of the backdrop and only one time on the top elements. Now from here, all we have left to do is sign it with our text. So I'm gonna to go to layer, new layer, and then I'm gonna to go to my brush tool rather than my text tool, and I'll just choose a round brush, except I'm gonna go into the window brush panel and I'm going to lower the size to something that's decent for us to work with. Probably right around 10 pixels for this canvas size. And then I'm going to take the roundness down to about 80% and then turn the angle on its side just a bit so it's more like we're working with a marker. Now let's make sure our foreground color is set to white and we turn our opacity all the way back up to 100, flow back up to 100, and I have a Wacom stylus and tablet so I actually am able to draw and use my hand for pen pressure, which gives you the ability to do nice handwritten effects. If you don't have that, that's okay. Do your best with your mouse. If you want, you can use a text font that is a handwritten type of font. You know, use one that looks like it's more written by hand or go on something like defont.com and find something that looks handwritten. Or, you know, even get crazy and scan your signature and put it into Photoshop. But I have this tablet, so I'm going to use it, and let's just sign the album title and call it a finished product. So I'll grab that brush that we made. I'll do for your eyes only. Honestly, the four could have been better. Try it a couple times. You can grab the move tool, move things around wherever you want. Uh, you can even press command T and rotate things. But... I'm going to leave it at that. You get the idea of how you would sign the text. And if you want, you can go on the internet, go on Wikipedia or something, slap your classic parental advisory sticker on there. Literally just drag the PNG into Photoshop, slap it in there. But that's essentially how to recreate the J. Cole for your eyes only album cover. Some of the techniques and things you got to keep in mind and how to get creative with it. So all credit out to the original artist. But for those of you who watched all the way to the end here, thank you so much. Definitely appreciate it. Feel free to leave a like on the video if you liked it. And if you want to see more album art recreations, I have a whole playlist full of a few more. So check those out on my channel. I'll leave a link. And definitely subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all types of new creative videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.